so here's a hot take. The FX6 is not a cinema camera. And I want to show you how G Masters perform for filming MMA. If you're new to the channel, let me fill you in. I just came from the Canon cinema line, specifically the C70, and switched to the FX6. Why? Because I was getting increasing demands from clients to fit in a Sony ecosystem, whether that's the Alpha series or their FX series. And also I wanted some of the features that Sony was offering, an extremely high, high base ISO at 12,800 and being very clean. Um, there was also the longer shape of the camera. By the way, this is my footage playing in the back. Uh, I did that a couple years for them. Really cool to see that they still broadcast it and have it rolling for the fans. Um, there should be my tag at the end. Yep, there it is. And my background is in corporate and documentary filmmaking. So I personally prioritize speed and efficiency. You usually have very short amounts of time to get your gear set up. Therefore, if I can eliminate all of the obstacles and hurdles that normally slow me down, I'm a happy camper. Case in point, I'm using V-mount batteries. So one battery system, meaning I only have to monitor one battery level and it will power my camera, my monitor, and any other accessories that I choose. So if you have a camera with lots of accessories, you'll know the pain of thinking which one needs to be changed, how much time do I have left, which one needs to go on the charger, it's a nightmare. So for me, the FX6 th had a system that prioritized speed, and that's what drew me in. Whereas if you look at today's highest level cinema cameras, they strictly focus on getting the best image quality possible. And while the Sony FX6 does have amazing image quality, the speed is what is making it the dream documentary run and gun or ENG camera. And I really do believe that. This guy just got the knockout of his life. And thank goodness I was in the right spot, right time. Sometimes you're not when you're filming sports. I got my 16 by nine markers on. You can see he throws the overhand and makes the guy flip over. And the social media team actually had this up within about 60 seconds. They're filming on their iPhones and uploading straight to Reels. So there's the social media team. There's me who's doing a little bit more polished Reels that'll be delivered later in the week. And then there's also the pay-per-view crew. So my camera's here and I looked over and saw that they had the exact same setup minus the V-mount batteries and they are leveling up their gear camera by camera to make a more polished product. And it's very cool to see because I am doing the same and I'm growing with them and I'm watching them grow and they have thrown my name in when bigger fish come into town. So it's a nice group effort. And even the quality of their audio, the commentary, different cameras, they have a PTZ camera. Uh, pen tilt zoom it's a robotic camera if you're not familiar uh, used a lot in sports and uh, even some branded apparel so just making everything look a little bit more cohesive and i'm happy to see it working out like that but back to the g master so all the bells and whistles i got the mark ii it's a little smaller it's a little lighter than the mark one and it has these autofocus buttons on it if you come from canon you know the l series is their luxury line well this is in the same vein it's supposed to be their higher ticket item and higher performance and for 2500 dollars after shipping i was thinking it was going to be a little bit sharper and maybe that was just because i had built up the g master name in my head um it is a zoom after all and i do prefer zooms every time i use primes they seem to take up more time and just aren't valuable enough. As soon as I put one on, I want to switch it, and that's why I like having zoom. So it's by no means soft, but it's. I thought it was going to be a little bit sharper. You may notice that the Sony OEM monitor is not on there. 
it's a little too small a little too dark a little bit too reflective and i much prefer the small hd 502 bright a lot of people have been asking that's what it is unfortunately it's discontinued um but it's a very very common monitor when you're working with uh experienced professionals they last forever they have an extremely low power draw and they're just great um, there are some newer versions now but i really really like these so getting back to this G Master, um, first thing up, the smooth and tight function. So it actually actively changes the tension on the zoom ring, which is very, very nice because when I came from the Sigma 24 to 70, whenever I started a zoom, it took a big jump to get it moving and it wasn't that flattering. Also the iris ring, you can click or de-click it. Never had that opportunity before. I like to just keep it in the uh, electronic function. So I just use the dials on the camera, especially since there's one on the side grip. Again, fast operation is what I'm after. Uh, I just want the camera to get out of the way, which brings me to my initial statement. Yes, the Sony FX6 is in their cinema lineup, uh, I don't know any cameras in theaters that have been shot on an FX6, but I do know that tons of users are gravitated towards it because the camera prioritizes speed and efficiency. And I am so happy that they designed it this way. Yes, they will get a few more bucks out of everyone if they call it the cinema line instead of the run and gun line. But that is essentially what it is. It gives you all of these minor assists to make your job as easy as possible so you can focus on the live scenario that you're in. Gotta keep that strong grip when you're rolling through Miami. Y en Florida siempre hay una oportunidad a mejorar mi español. Airbnb for the night, not bad. Little side house in Fort Lauderdale and some mood pillows, some chocolates, and I've never seen this before. But that's kind of cool. I have been to Florida before, I live here. And salsa, let's see what it finally looks like. Yeah, yep, that's good. So I am extremely tired, I can't wait to go to sleep. Tomorrow I drive back to Orlando, switch luggage, and jump on a plane to Houston for five days for corporate work. But the point of this video, uh, what I wanted, my message was that the FX6 is a fantastic camera. I am so happy I got it and left Team Canon in the dust. I know there's a lot of people who came onto this channel because of all the C70 work I've done. It's great for specific applications. I just feel the FX6 uh, can handle more. And uh, I have another clip that I filmed earlier in the week, but I'm gonna play it now and it's for freelancers and contractors keep this in mind i'm commonly given contractor for hire agreements that i need to sign and normally they're pretty standard uh mostly it's about you can't work with this client outside of us which i completely agree with i would hope that the contractors i bring in follow that same ethic but i was recently given one and under the working hours clause it said we are only considering or prioritizing results, not hours worked. And I had to message them back and say, you know, as a contractor, I am only considering hours worked. And after my 10 hour day, it goes to time and a half per hour after that. So they responded with, um, well, we don't do time and a half. We just continue the hourly rate. So now that I have that information, that is very, very helpful to learn now instead of during the invoicing process when I've already done the work, I have no leverage, and they say, no, you need to bring down that, that invoice number. So it's very important to read those agreements front to back. And I wasn't gonna say anything to the client, but I ended up doing it and now I have more information, which is better. So that's my suggestion. Just read, read the contracts thoroughly. Oh, okay, so let's do it. You going front? Keep it going. And then. <laughs> I 
Oh, the tweaker. <laughs> 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 <laughs>